This production is brought to you by the University of Edinburgh. Welcome along. In this session, we're going to look at creating a matrix and how to access elements in arrays and matrices. So by combining the knowledge of creating row and column vectors, we can quite easily create a matrix. For example, let's create a matrix A that has two rows and four columns. So in the first row, I'll have the elements 1, 2, 3 and 4. Then I'll denote a new row with a semicolon. And in the second row, I'm going to have the elements 5, 6, 7 and 8. And close with a square bracket. And that gives us the matrix A. Now we're going to look at a couple of commands for investigating the size of arrays and matrices. But before we do that, let's create a row vector called B that has some elements in it starting at 30, counting down in steps of 2, and stopping at 14. Now if we want to find out something about the size of matrix A or vector B, we could use the whose command, like we've done previously, to list all the variables in our current workspace. But if I just want to look at A, I can use the size command on the matrix A, and it returns a variable containing the numbers 2 and 4. 2 corresponding to the number of rows, and 4 corresponding to the number of columns. In a similar fashion, I can use a command called length to find out the length of my row vector B. And it returns an answer of 9, because B contains 9 elements. So the second part of this screencast is about accessing individual elements within arrays and matrices. And the notation we use to do that is the matrix or array that we want to investigate. So in this case, we're going to look at A. We then use a round bracket. And when, then we use the notation row, comma, column. So for example, if I want to investigate the element 6 in the matrix A, I can see that's on the second row, so I would use 2, comma, and I can see that it's in the second column. So again, I would use 2 and close with a round bracket. And I expect when I hit enter to be returned the answer 6, which is the element at that point. So let's do something similar for B. I want to investigate the second last element in B. So B contains one row, and it's the eighth column that I'm interested in. And you can see that returns the value 16. Now what happens if I want to return a whole row from A? I can use the colon notation to do that. So again, the matrix A, open brackets. I want the first row, but I want all the columns. So I simply replace the column value with colon, and I close the round brackets. And now I get the whole of the first row of A. Similarly, if I wanted all of the rows in the third column of A, I would do A, open brackets, all the rows in the third column. And as expected, that returns 3 and 7. So in this screencast, we've looked at how to create matrices, how to access the size of a matrix or array using the size and length functions. And we've looked at how to get access to different elements within matrices and arrays. This production is copyright, the University of Edinburgh.